it's taken a huge amount of effort, time and investment to get us to where we are today, which is a very, very different place to where we were 10 years ago. We must maintain this momentum because otherwise it will put us back decades, actually. When I first started working on my PhD in 1997, I had a lot of lay friends who would say, gosh, haven't we eradicated TB? There weren't many people working on TB. There was a sort of relatively blank canvas and it, it made it really exciting to think about how we could start to make a difference and how we could start to develop vaccines. I remember we when we literally vaccinated the first three people and we look at immune responses over time. So we got the one week samples and the responses were huge. They were much higher than we were expecting. That was an enormously exciting moment. I remember running down the corridor to show the rest of the group how, how strong the responses were. Well, for me, when I was 12 years old, I decided that I wanted to work on an international research team developing cures for uh, viral infections. So I was either very lucky to do what I'd always wanted to do, or I have so little imagination <laughs> that I couldn't think of an alternative. So the immune responses would still be high? Yes. But um, not, yeah. we'll, we'll come down a bit, won't okay. we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We get the Helens and Helen McFletcher. <laughs> Do you know, I'll get her email, she'll get mine, and <laughs> forward them across. <laughs> as my boss, as my colleague, as a mother, you know, Helen, has, we've, we've supported each other and, you know, I definitely feel that we've sort of grown together over the last 10 years and it's been an amazing journey. People have to know that TB is still a problem in the world today. TB is the second leading cause of death from infectious diseases next to HIV AIDS. In a matter of fact, it's the number one killer of people living with HIV. There's actually more women every year that die of tuberculosis than die in childbirth. Well, it's airborne, and because we don't have an effective vaccine, we're all exposed. Ten years ago, there wasn't a single TB vaccine in clinical development, so MV85A was the first to go forward into clinical trials. When the trial was first set up, a lot of people in, in the general science community didn't think that such a large trial or an efficacy trial of TB, particularly in infants, could be achieved. For a long time in TB research, we tested vaccines in the laboratory, tested them in the animal models. I mean, we can protect 10 out of 10 mice with a vaccine, but we need to be protecting 10 out of 10 humans. It was a big step to move forward from that into human clinical trials. And that's the only way at the moment we can work out which candidates work, which candidates don't work. We didn't demonstrate efficacy with the vaccine and so I think the temptation in the field might be, well, you know, this cost a huge amount of money and took an enormous amount of time and maybe we should be putting our effort elsewhere. That's completely wrong. There are very few fields where, you know, you, where your first shot is, is a winner, right? It just doesn't work that way. You need to learn from the first few candidates in order to really create the candidates that are going to take you all the way to success. You know, you cannot have ambitious targets and then say, well, because we've come up with one result that hasn't been what we expected, we're going to close shop. Well, the, there's a very logical reason why we should continue, because people are dying, and they should not die because of tuberculosis. There's no lack of great ideas, and there's no lack of candidates in the early stages that we can continue to pursue. We shouldn't feel as though the field is, is behind, it's in front of us, and we will get there. 
the only long-term effective way to control any infectious disease epidemic is by effective vaccination. And I think it's, it's absolutely imperative now that we keep this going. Where do you want to use your science if it's not to save people's lives? I honestly feel like there's a huge space for leadership, political leadership on this. We need the governments of the world to make this a top priority. Politicians, we need to do our part. And I think it's our job to back up those who are at the front line and working in research and development to make sure that resources are there. How would you like to say that you were a member of Congress and invested in a vaccine that wiped this disease off the face of the map? I mean, you know, what a legacy that could be. Well, unromantically, um, all our decisions are, are slightly economical. If we want to make the best use of the resources to get the biggest bang for our buck, um, we've got to think about how we can most cost-effectively use the resources that we have. We're talking about looking for vaccines that could save over a million lives a year around the globe. The benefits are very real in human terms. They're also very real in terms of the economic uh, returns that we get. Vaccines traditionally against infectious diseases have been the absolute most cost-effective tool in mitigating some of the world's most deadly diseases. When we're talking about investments in everything that we'll take to end TB, it's not a zero-sum game. There's no choice there between drugs, diagnostics, vaccines. These things all go together. But we want to finish the job. A vaccine is critical to finishing the job. The wonderful thing about this is that there's enough money in the world to do this, right? It's a fraction of, of a percent of pretty much any figure that you want to name, you know, pet food expenditure or how much people spend on cookies or all of the things that we take for granted. This is something that is absolutely eminently doable. There's a lot of excitement about TB right now. That's what you want to get, because when you get that excitement, you get the young, bright people with ideas that you might think are crazy, but they turn out to be the best ideas. You want those people to be involved in tuberculosis research. We need the brightest and best scientists in the world thinking about how we solve this epidemic. If we truly want to get a handle on this and actually stop people from dying, we need to adequately invest. And that doesn't just mean money. It also means investing time. It means investing expertise. It means strengthening the capacity and the infrastructure of research institutions in TB endemic countries. The private sector carries a tremendous amount of intellectual capital that is a, an essential driver of the science and the innovation. Industry has actually really gotten involved, and so industry investment was the biggest area for growth in the last year. From a business perspective, there's a robust market. Come on board, you know, and the world will be better off because you've helped us here. TB remains one of the biggest, uh, most significant health problems globally across the world. It has to be something that we pay a, a greater focus to. fabulous group of people. We've really defined a path with others for the clinical development of TB vaccines. I think there's a huge amount we've learned and continue to learn with every trial that we do. These are difficult targets we work on and I truly believe it's only by everyone working genuinely closely together we can really advance this field. We need to have that breakthrough, that scientific breakthrough that the world can get behind and start to have a vision of eliminating TB ultimately from this planet. What does it mean to prevent the world from an awful, deadly, infectious disease? For the first time in history, a mother would not be worrying about passing on this disease to her child. A young woman could pursue her dreams, travel the world without fear of becoming infected. A doctor could protect his patients with the new vaccine and not worry about becoming infected himself. The way that TB works in tandem with all those issues which keep people in poverty, if you imagine a vaccine for TB, you imagine a, a totally different world, actually.
an effective vaccine, this will happen. If you have the decision-making power to decide when this will happen, you will be part of global health history. You will be part of something that changes the way people live and die or don't die. It will actually, quite frankly, change the face of humanity.